Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date I have what I'm hoping will be a really interesting wagon from Dapol. As you probably know, I am a huge fan of interesting and unusual and possibly unique designs of rolling stock and I think today's model absolutely fits the bill for that. So this is today's model. If you have no idea what on earth you're seeing here, this is known as a telescopic hood wagon. These were produced from the late 1970s. I'll tell you all about them in a little while, but yeah, for obvious reasons, this was a wagon that I wanted to take a look at. It's produced by Dapol and the RRP is 36 pounds 23 i think it is it's a bit of a weird arbitrary price on this one yes yeah, so the rrp is 36 pounds 23 and the typical retailer price is just a hair below 30 pounds as you can see from hattons and if you're interested in picking these up i will include an affiliate link down in the description i think i bought mine from tmc the model center but about the same price about 29 pounds so they're not cheap or anything right uh, particularly if you were going to buy these in a large rake and that would be prototypical yeah this would get very expensive pretty quickly but then equally it doesn't seem too bad does it particularly given the size of these wagons and given the fact that I think they have some pretty interesting action features on them as well and as you can also see they come with these uh, strip steel coins I believe I think they're plastic on the model obviously it would be insane if they were actual steel but yeah you've got a few little extras like that so very very fascinated to see what this wagon is like you're going to come along for the trip as well so let's find out together here we go all right, so I'm really curious to find out how this is going to work. I should clear up early on, I don't think these are electric and motorised. I don't think they would have been in real life either. I assume they would have just been sort of hand operated. Uh, I just thought I'd clear that up because they are quite expensive. Uh, I don't think they're sort of motorised like the nuclear flask wagons were or anything like that. Um, but I will show you the end of the box so that you can see the product version I have. So there's all sorts of different ones to choose from, but this one is 4F-039-009. It is a double O gauge telescopic hood wagon. It is in the tip hook blue and grey livery, which means this is a sort of later version of the wagon, in real life that is. And it's number 33705890024-9, I think that is, that might be the running number. And this is compatible with a minimum of second radius curves, so it should be fine for most people's layouts. Right, well, there's not a great deal to see on the box, other than that it's all printed the right way up. So yes, well done for that, Dapple. Let's pull this out and take the first look. All right. And I suppose I will do... Oh, look. <laughs> the uh, strip steel coins actually have their own packaging. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, so I suppose that does make this a bit more tricky to unbox. All right, so there's the wagon's packaging. Is this going to come out? Yep, I think it is. Right. So, first things first, these things seem pretty heavy. I joked that I thought they would just be plastic. Obviously, I think they are, but they're pretty heavy plastic. Let's pull out the biggest one, take a look at this. So, nice finish on this. I can't believe I'm semi-reviewing a piece of plastic with a little swirl in the middle. But yeah, nice finish on that. And I suppose that gives you a lot of modeling opportunities, doesn't it? You could, you know, reenact scenarios where the wagons would be loaded and unloaded. Or I suppose you could just open them up after a journey and just show what's inside. That's pretty cool. And I think they're pretty much all different shapes and sizes. You've got a big one, small one there, and then two medium-sized ones. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how they go into the wagon. Put those to one side. And then the wagon itself. Let's take a look at this. I've no idea when Dapol first produced this. Uh, the detailing on it looks a little basic. So I'm guessing it's not brand new. <laughs> I'm trying to open this packaging when it's taped shut again. Versus Dapol, why do you do this? It's a trap. Okay, that's all right. I just undid it with my hands in order to get rusty. Right, let's take a look. Right, so, yeah, very interesting looking top. In fact, shall we start off with the action feature? Let's see if this thing's going to open. It opens from the large end. Yeah, and it does telescope like the real thing would, and there are even little bays for the coins, for the strip still to sit inside. Uh, I don't know whether that would really be the case in real life, because obviously with this model you're stuck with the one large one and the medium-sized one and the two smaller ones. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure if that would be the case, but in model form that will definitely keep them in place. I suppose in real life they'd be strapped down and held more securely by different means that would not be practical in model form. So I guess that's why they've done that. Could be wrong though, do let me know if you know. All right, here is the wagon. And for quite a large thing, it doesn't feel very heavy, to be honest. But if you were to put those coins on board, I think the weight would be okay. And obviously that's where they're designed to go. So when I weigh this, I will include those. And I think the weight will be absolutely fine. All right, so yeah, the detailing does look from the get-go a little bit on the coarse side, doesn't it? A lot of the parts do seem quite chunky, and particularly the bogey detail and such looks a bit on the basic side as well. But yeah, we'll take a closer look and find out in a second. But first, I'm going to do something I don't tend to usually do with a wagon review, and that is to give you some history on the things, uh, because I think these are so unusual, they do sort of justify it. So here we go. So as I said, these wagons were introduced in 1979 and they were produced for around six years by Link Hoffman Bush for operating by VTG. The wagons were designed for transporting strip steel in coin form, doing so with the use of that opening telescopic hood design, which kept the cargo safe and dry while maintaining practicality in loading and unloading, particularly with the larger consists, which were often in excess of 10 wagons long. So yes, you would need quite a lot of these to make a realistic consist. Since their introduction, the telescopic hoods have been operated by tip hook rail, as seen by this model, and Dapol have produced these models with liveries depicting a couple of different operators in not just double O gauge but in N gauge as well, which is pretty cool. So if you model N gauge, Dapol have catered for you in this case. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and say I don't think this wagon was worth 30 quid. Don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of simpler models with less detail, and in fact I think having low-end models available is going to be absolutely essential to our hobby going forward, so that people who aren't willing to spend quite as much on models still have one or two models to buy. So simpler models are absolutely fine by me as long as this is reflected in the price. And all of the online listings I've seen for this didn't seem to suggest that this was a basic model and the price of £30 or more certainly doesn't suggest that this is going to be a basic model but it really, really is. And we'll go into some of the detailing in just a second but first we'll talk about the decoration. As you can see the finish on this is perfectly flat. The finish carries no suggestion whatsoever of metalwork it really is perfectly matte so these wagons would be a perfect candidate for weathering a lot of the pictures in real life of these wagons show them looking pretty dirty and obviously when stuff's dirty it does look more matte it's not quite as shiny so yeah weathering is going to be a must for these I think the decoration, to be perfectly honest, isn't all that accurate, really. As you can see, we've got stray blue paint where it shouldn't be on the body, and you've got a fair bit of overspray on the blue arrows on the end there. You've got a little bit of the blue creeping into the white ferry wagon text there. And in places, the paint is a little bit thick and uneven as well. So it's not absolutely amazing. It's not bad. I would say overall, the decoration is all right because you have got a few areas, particularly on the underframe, which are much better. I suppose these are easier surfaces to paint onto. And as you can see, those look quite a lot better. Now, unfortunately, the level of detail is really, really low on these, like incredibly so. So as you can see, the buffer beams have absolutely no detail on them whatsoever, no couplings, nothing like that. And if I show you a photo of the real telescopic hood wagon, which I'll do quite a lot today, you can see on the real wagons that is not the case. You do have this massive vacuum pipe here, and this is actually one of the few separately fitted parts on the wagon, and that does look pretty good and fine actually. The buffers are just plastic, I believe, not particularly well fitted. As you can see, you've got big gaps between the buffers and the buffer beams. Some of them are a little bit wonky, and they're not sprung or anything, so really there's no reason why they should get wonky, because they don't need to be loose in order to move or anything. These handrails on the ends are incredibly large scale and chunky. Again, if I show you the picture of the real wagon, that was not the case at all. The bogey detail is very, very basic as well. I would just say the axle boxes and the detailing there doesn't have enough relief to make it look realistic, so that's a pity. The underframe is very basic as well. A lot of the detailing here is either just a part of the molding or missing entirely. And the parts that are separately fitted, such as this turning wheel, are incredibly large scale. That is not a fine piece at all. Despite its size, it's quite thick and chunky. And again, looking at the real wagon, that is very much not the case. 
One detail that does look quite fine and realistic though are these sort of latches which are at each end and these in real life would I suppose lock the telescopic hoods into place so that they don't open during transit and those actually look quite nice and fine and uh, they almost look like they would work even on the model. Uh, they sort of do, if I close this end, you can see they sort of appear to engage, which is quite impressive, I suppose. Um, but no, don't try and move them because they are glued in place statically. And I will just show you some more of the detailing on the ends. As you can see, it's all just molded detail. None of the separate parts are actually separately fitted. So yeah, incredibly basic. It is all plastic, of course. I think on the underside, there is a weight here that's been screwed on. That is a metal part, so that gives the wagon a little bit of weight. But to be honest, without the coins, without the steel coins inside, it's not dreadfully heavy given the size of the body on this thing. It's only 98 grams, which is about 12 grams per axle. That's actually not too bad. That's only a little bit less than the Hatton's Warwell. But obviously, bear in mind, the center of gravity of this wagon is going to be quite a lot higher than a Warwell uh, because it's got a taller body. So for stability, you definitely want these coins fitted inside because with the coins, the total weight shoots up to 144 grams which is nearly half again and that's around 18 grams per axle so it's going to be far more stable that way and I will just show you the uh, the fitting or the loading if you will of the steel coins so the hoods open up it's not a bad motion on that actually they're not so loose that they're going to be opening in transit which is good but they're easy enough to open so that you're not damaging the thing to do it I think that's important and then there is a place for each of these to go so you can't really customize it too much although I suppose you could you could change them around a little bit they would allow you to do that I suppose and this does at least mean that they they're going to stay in position and I think even if you were to shake this thing around as you pick it off the track or whatever as long as the hood is shut they should all fall back into place which is going to be quite good so obviously use the coins if you want maximum stability and you definitely want to use them anyway because they're a nice little bit of realism on a model that is otherwise quite simple and basic so there you go yeah not terribly impressive there's no aspect of it that is particularly good I suppose overall from any sort of distance they just about do the job they give an indication of the real life prototype but up close this certainly doesn't cut it and I just would not want to spend 300 pounds or more on buying sort of 10 or so of these to make a realistic consist it just doesn't seem like great value for money unfortunately but we'll take a look at the wheels and check the gauge we'll look at the couplings we'll do the Gordon's Hill rolling test to see how free rolling this thing is and of course we'll see how stable it is around the track as well so lots to do hopefully things will start to look a bit better from now on let's give that a try so here we have today's test setup. For the Loco, I've gone with the Hornby Class 66 because similarly, I thought that was uh, far too basic for what it cost and it was also decorated quite horribly. So yeah, I think that's fitting. In terms of rolling stock, I've got some bogeyed wagons and such. I've got the Warwells, the Turbot wagon, which is a better wagon by Dapol. It's cheaper, much more detail on it. That's kind of more what I was expecting. Yeah, other different bits of rolling stock. And here is the telescopic hood wagon, which I don't don't get me wrong I've not been very positive about it because well I can't be really as an objective reviewer but I do quite like this thing you know it's very unusual so it does appear to me in that sense I just wish it was a little bit less expensive I suppose so in terms of the performance things aren't really that great well they're not looking that great to start with so first of all strange design going on with the wheels as you can see we've got a plastic axle here not a metal one um, yeah generally speaking I'm not a fan of that because obviously plastic is softer than metal and it does have a tendency to relinquish its grip on wheels and such and then things get out of gauge although perhaps it's not quite so bad on rolling stock as it is on locos those old backman split chassis locos were terrible for it and they've really tainted plastic axles for me but yeah metal axles on modern wagons are much better as far as I'm concerned now I've decided to do a bit of an investigation on the Gordon's Hill rolling test because obviously I have the power to change the weight of this thing to Day. So first of all, I did the test without the weights inside. So this is as the wagon weighs 98 grams. And as you can see, it didn't do very well at all. Didn't go very far, just about made it to the signal box. That's not very impressive as a free rolling wagon. Then I repeated the same test in exactly the same way, but this time with the weights inside. And I expected it to go further and it did but not much further, just a matter of inches really. So I reckon the reason is because it's got a little bit more momentum now, so it's, it takes more energy to slow it down, but also because it weighs so much more, it takes more energy for gravity to speed it up as well. So the difference isn't that great. 
But no, the real reason, as far as I can tell, that this is not that free rolling is that there is a noticeable source of friction on these wheels in the form of these weird little nubs which stick out from the bogies and actually touch the sides of the wheels. What a bizarre design. I'm guessing the idea is that it keeps the wheels centered in the bogies, but no other wagon that I own needs to use that um, with proper wheels and axles and proper axle boxes that are in the right place and are the right size. You don't need anything like that. So yeah, those are pushing on the wheels and causing them to slow down. And that's why you do get the weird sudden stops sometimes. So that's not really ideal, particularly as these need to run in large consists. If you bought a lot of these, particularly with the weights inside, you'd need quite a beefy loco to shift them because there's quite a lot of drag. So yeah, it's not looking fantastic, but let's test the couplings. The couplings are rigid on the bogies, which is good to see because uh, Dapol's moving. Uh, couplings tend to be a bit dodgy, don't they? So hopefully this one won't be. Let's back the 66 up and try a coupling with the Warwells. I've decided to couple it up to wagons that are reliable. Although speaking of reliability, the loco is not going anywhere because it's rubbish. Here we go, I'm giving it a push. Oh, okay. So, did it work? Yep, yeah, sort of. The coupling on the war well, annoyingly, the hook has gone the wrong way. So I'm going to fix that because if it derails because of that, I don't want to be blaming Dapol's wagon for it because it wasn't Dapol's fault. Uh, right, let's couple up to the other wagon. These are two Dapol couplings and they do appear to have gone together properly. That's pretty good. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so, I mean, it will get some points, obviously, if it can go around the layout without a problem. So let's do that now. Let's go up to 40, 50 speed, nice freight speed. Let's see how it gets on. Well, I'm not expecting to see any issues around the second radius because it did say explicitly on the box that it could handle those. And, ah, oh, the loco's letting us down a little bit. Useless thing. <laughs> but yes, the, the wagon did not derail, and that is the crucial thing. I should say also, despite the plastic axles and the issues, the gauging was only a little bit tight, 14.5 mil on some axles, and I think the other was about two that had 14.6. So a little bit tight, but not to the point where it's gonna cause issues, and certainly on uh, my curves and, and such, it's not causing any problems. So yeah, besides the drag issue, performance actually seems fine, and it's much better than when you've got those Dapol couplings that cause constant derailments and such. So yeah, performance could be better, but it also could be a lot worse. So overall, I'm just gonna be thankful that the thing works well. And it looks really good, actually. Yeah, I can imagine a rake of these looking pretty good. In fact, I suppose a rake would look better because obviously then you're not just focusing on a single wagon where you might notice the lack of detail and such. Looking at them as a group, you would see them as a larger object and then the lack of detail and the slightly sloppy paintwork and such wouldn't matter so much. Uh, but then again, you've got to pay quite a lot for the privilege then, haven't you? But yeah, overall, they're not terrible or anything. They look okay, definitely seen better wagons, definitely had wagons that perform better and such, but then again, there's not that much choice for telescopic hood wagons on the market. So it's not like they're terrible or anything. If you really want these or if these are absolutely necessary to make your layout complete for whatever you decide to do on it, then sure, yeah, they're okay. And if you can get them at the right price, uh, not too bad. They do seem to work all right. Let's have some ratings then, shall we? And as you can see, yeah, it's not looking too great. It doesn't excel in any area, really. Uh, the strongest area of this model is performance, and even that was only passable. So yeah, level of detail, I've given two star. Yes, yeah, not great, this one, unfortunately. Very, very chunky details in lots of areas. Decoration, not that precise, lets it down a little bit, particularly up close. And it's missing quite a lot of details, particularly on the buffer beams and on the underframe and such. Performance then is actually a lot better than I expected. There are drag issues with this and those weird little plastic bits touching the wheels do cause strange behavior sometimes if the wagons are free rolling. It's not a huge deal though, let's be honest. They don't derail, that's the main thing. And they're not ultra stiff or anything. So I've perhaps been a little bit generous here, but I have given them four star because they are fit for purpose on performance. 
Quality then, I've knocked off a couple of stars, very, very plasticky construction, unfortunately. Uh, a couple of details are made of metal, so it gets some brownie points for that. But yeah, the bulk of the metal on the model just comes in the form of a metal weight, which is screwed to the bottom. Issues with the decoration, so that affects the quality. And then you've got the wheel design and the plastic axles. Not keen on that, unfortunately, not the greatest quality, but no huge quality issues. At least nothing's dropping off the thing, so it does get some points for that. Value for money then, £36.23 is the RRP, with a typical retailer price being around £29 to £30. Yeah, it's not that great to be honest, this is a very basic wagon, it's clearly very dated and up close it's definitely not that great is it? However, from any sort of distance they will be alright for the job, I would have said, they do look alright, so yeah, if you really want a big rake of these, they're going to look okay together, but they're not up to the standard of more modern rolling stock at a similar sort of price, which I suppose is the issue. So overall that is a pretty modest score of 5 out of 10, let's pop that into the ranking. Okay, so that is 10th in bottom place, uh, and I suppose that makes sense, it is the most basic and least detailed wagon I've looked at this year and it was pretty obvious as soon as the thing came out of the box. So not terrible, but not great either. Well, that should just about do it for this one then, folks. Yeah, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Uh, none of the listings, as I say, that I looked at when I was buying this suggested that this was a particularly basic model, and obviously the price didn't suggest that either. So, yeah, a little bit disappointed that it wasn't better, but I've got it now. Uh, it wasn't worth what I paid for it, I don't think, but I'm not unhappy with my purchase. It's definitely something that I'm going to use, and it's definitely an interesting wagon to have. So it's not all bad news, really. It's not something I can wholeheartedly recommend, so do bear that in mind. Thank you for watching, though. I will be doing lots more reviews uh, in the near future, so tune in and subscribe if you want to. Ooh, don't say that very often. That's all I've got to say now, so thank you for watching, and I will see you very soon. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.